Celtic Speed Scottish Mini Cooper Cup 2011. to Knock Hill Racing Circuit for the Scottish Mini Championship. Now, I had a word with some of the drivers in the Holden area just before they went out onto the grid, so let's see what they had to say. Louise, I just wanted to grab a quick word with you before you go out there. You've qualified really, really well today. What's, so what's the trick? Uh, I don't know, actually. I think it's just, I mean, I, I missed the last round. Uh, we didn't make it up, so I'm, I'm one race down. So this is my first race of the season, but don't know. I mean, it just, the car felt good and it was all, it all came together. I think I was slightly disappointed, although position-wise it's not too bad. But um, I didn't feel that I put a good lap together, and I didn't really run a good time. So, but well, um, you must be yeah. feeling quite confident for the race then. Yeah, quite confident. It, was, it would be a good race. So I think last year I was right at the back. This time, um, last year I was qualifying dead last, and uh, so it's nice to be in the thick of it and have people to race with. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It'll be really good. Well, good luck. We'll keep a good Thank eye on you. Very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, I'm just going to grab a quick word with these three guys. Guys, I just want to interrupt you guys quickly. Obviously, you've gone out qualifying. It's gone really, really well. But we want to have a word with you, Vic, because I want your opinion on which of these two brothers is best. Oh, I don't know. I'm beside David on the grid. Tim's behind me, so I'm going to go for Tim just now because he's more likely to hit me as we go through. So, uh, <laughs> rather about even Stevens, I would have thought. Although it's obvious that Tim's leading the championship or, or beating David, I'm leading the championship, so I'm better, I would have said, than the two of them at the moment. That might change by the end of today, but no, they're pretty good. Well, thank you for that. That puts it all to pay on that front. So, let's we'll see how they got on in the race. Fourth race of the season then for the Celtic Speed Mini Cooper Cup and pole position going to David Slade's third in the championship at the moment. Vic Covey alongside with Chris Smiley and Tim Slay on row two. Row three, Adam Leach and Stephen Brewster. Fourth row of the grid, Steve Clark and Kyle Reid. Then it's Hamish Brandon and Alan Walk. Murray Muir and Kenny McLeod make up row six. Seventh row of the grid, it's the first of the ladies, Louise Flitton and Fiona Wallace next to her. Then Daniel Dreelan and Elaine Marshall, Michael Faulkner and Guy Johnston on row nine. Row ten, Emma Bruce and Steve Coe had very limited qualifying time this morning. So we'll see what he can do from the back of the field as the cars come around on their formation lap here at Knock Hill. Blue skies, perfect conditions for, as we said, the fourth race of the year. David Slay on pole. I think it's his, his uh, checking back, it's his first pole in the Scottish Mini Cooper Cup. As we look at Kyle Reid in car number 20, very impressive debut for Kyle in the first race of the championship. First three races of the championship, the first round, as was, of course, last time out. Rest of the field coming into line. This is the, the nervous part for the drivers at the front as they have to wait for the rest of the field to come into line. They're all marshalled into place. Cars on the back row of the grid, you can see there. Emma Bruce in 25, that's the white car with the yellow square black cross in indicating new driver. Guy Johnston in blue is ahead of her. And uh, alongside Emma is Steve Kerr, the man who had, I think, just the, the outlap, I think, in qualifying. Didn't set qualifying time according to the timing sheet, so he's got a little bit of work to do. We'd expect to see him come through the field and make some progress in this race which is scheduled to be over eight laps lights out for the first time cracking start by Vic Covey Jr from as we look at it the right uh, Covey normally a little bit slower away at the start but he seems to be doing some practice but it's David Slay with him but Covey's going to try and come down the outside line Slay gets his nose in front and just a bit of contact between the two Covey's across the glass collects it up or does he? Because he's gone slight sideways again. Through on the inside is going to be Tim Slay. Covey's still fighting the car. Covey hangs on to it. That was real touring car stuff, wasn't it, going on there? And Vic Covey masterly held on to it superbly, Vic Covey. He's in third place, so it's David Slay leading brother Tim. Then on the inside comes Covey fighting back, and he's trying to come through on the inside. Tim Slay gets forced off onto the dirt. Covey's in no mood to mess around as they go through Carlu Corner, and he's back into second position, but David Slay is away and down the road. This is incredible stuff. Chris Smiley now challenging for second place. Tim Slay on the outside. Here comes the red and white car of Chris Smiley. He goes up the inside in the mix as well. Is Kyle Reed in car number 20. Alan Walk is uh, here as well, back with us for his first race of the season. No, many drivers uh, missed seeing Alan here on circuit in round one. We did too here in the commentary box. 
and he's back on track. But look at this, this is the scrap for second place. Vic Covey Jr. leading from Chris Smiley. Tim Slay looks down the inside. Kyle Reed has very, very little knowledge of racecraft, Kyle Reed, so he's thrown right in the deep end at the last round. Very, very quick learner is he in the third of the white fronted cars. Going through John Arwe. There is Tim Slay, car number four. Won the third race, of course, the reverse grid race of round one after being put back in the results of the first race. Then had to work his way through the field. Quick look there at 19, the yellow car of Steve Brewster. Uh, following him, the green machine of Stephen Clark, car number nine. We're on board with uh, Woo Woo Walk, trying to close in on Stephen Brewster at the moment and Brewster having a look down the outside line Walk goes to the outside line here is he going to be able to make up a position as they come into the hairpin past the FFDR stand on the outside and it's not quite room there very nearly touches to Alan Walk it's a little shake of the head there I don't think Alan was too happy about that brilliant awareness you can see from the little shot at the bottom left corner uh, very, Alan very aware of what's going on behind him keeping an eye on his mirrors so good driver awareness from him as He's looking ahead, trying to close down on Stephen Clark in front of him. Down through Duffer's dip. Sack curves into Scotsman corner. Clark, another newcomer, as you can see from the insignia on the back of the car. And kicking up the dirt ahead of him is Stephen Brewster in yellow. But David Slay still leads this one from Vic Covey Jr. Then it's Chris Smiley, followed by Tim Slay. Then Stephen Brewster in yellow. Then Carl Reid. Green car of Stephen Clark goes through and Alan Walk down behind him. We've got Hamish Brandon in the Panda car number eight. Keep an eye out for Hamish. Hoping to make his way through. This is the view back from the second place man, Vic Covey Jr. Two wins at the first round of the championship for Covey. And he leads the championship by two points coming into this race from Tim Slay. So, and three points from David Slay, who is in front in the race. So this is going to shake the order up a little bit but the drivers none of the drivers overly concerned about single races because the as I said the format for the Scottish Mini Cooper Cup brought to you in association with Celtic Speed very much three race format just like the British Touring Car Championship which is of course where many of these drivers as, aspire to they'll be hoping to follow in the wheel tracks of Gordon Shedden and move up into touring cars and do well at it as well little moment off the circuit there for Murray Muir busy chasing Hamish Brandon in car number eight so Murray goes just a, a tad wide again there is Alan Moore coming under a bit of pressure from Hamish Brandon Murray Muir having a very good go isn't he at trying to put Hamish Brandon just off kilter but not working at the moment this is the part of the race where it all just starts to settle down a bit you get this madness at the opening laps and then maybe things get a little bit more frantic towards him Alan Walk hanging on to eighth place at the moment ahead of Hamish Brandon in car number eight so Hamish not having a bad run great view from the Beatsons bridge as the leaders all pretty much following their line picking up the pit signals you can see from the pit wall on the right of shot David Slay still continue on, uh, continuing on his way now Vic Covey Jr is uh, really getting the measure of the other drivers in terms of lap times a 63.92 for Covey a 63.925 for the man behind him which is Chris Smiley I'm wondering if those two maybe working together might be able to go a little bit faster get a bit of a toe and pull each other around the track but at the moment David Slay very clearly ahead there is David Slay then down towards the hairpin once again Slay leading from Vic Covey Jr third place Chris Smiley fourth place and looking a bit lonely is Tim Slay, Smiley trying to work out his options, very frustrating first round for Chris Smiley, really didn't get the results that he wanted but he knows it's a long haul the championship, we got on board with the amiable Northern Irishman ex-karting racer and we're getting a lot of travelling drivers coming up to Knock Hill now and racing in the championship drivers coming over from Ireland to race in the Legends cars as well as in the minutes as we go back down the order and look at Michael Falconer there just uh, popping down the inside of uh, Guy Johnston in the blue car Guy Johnston in the 24 machine these two having a cracking scrap they're down the, the bottom end of things but certainly having a good race so Johnston on the inside line and Michael Falcon has got it but Johnston's got him back great manoeuvre down the inside by Guy Johnston that is for 17th position 
and Michael Falcon are just dropping back a little bit at the moment but a good scrap going on for those two and I think the director right to pick up on that for us but we're going back now to the battle for second position between Vic Covey Jr and Chris Smiley the Ulsterman as I said one of many travelling drivers lots of drivers travelling in different formulas and coming here to race and it's a, a really super idea because there's six meetings throughout the course of the season here at Knock Hill plus a couple of away rounds and the Drivers can bed themselves in, learn the track. Once you've learned the track, you can sort yourself out on the car. But here we've got a potential change for position. The yellow machine there of Stephen Brewster. Kyle Reed is on the outside line, and Brewster is going through, coming through as well. Is Stephen Clark in green looking for the line? He needs to pop himself down the inside at Scotsman Corner. I thought it was going to be contact between the two there. Kyle Reed just rides the curb a little bit there. He talks about the new curbs on the first round of the championship with the extra raised bit on the inside you can see the red parts on the inside designed to stop the drivers going too far over the curbs and if you do go over it punishes the car big bouncy moment as we saw there uh, for Kyle Reid down behind Kyle it's still Stephen Clark in green and then a little bit of a gap back to Alan Walk followed by Hamish Brandon Kenny McLeod is in 10th position With so much racing going on in the world, you'd have to be a four-headed monster to keep up with it all. Luckily, we have that. Join Peter Keane, Bill Wood, Errol Tucker, and their guest driver analyst each week for an opinionated look at the news coming out of the racing world. Remember, it's GoRacingTV.com for all your racing and video needs. snaking under braking there for number 20 as he drifts wide Kyle Reid goes wide and up the inside goes Steve Clark they're side by side let's catch a view of them <coughs> leaders going through under the bridge here's the battle then between these two and let's see whether Steve Clark can go through on the inside line onto the last lap though we're looking at car number three David Slay the race leader fastest lap though looks like it's going to go to Vic Covey David Slay is not too far ahead. Kobe has his has him in his sights, which will be good news for Kobe. The pole position lap by Slay a 63-4. Vic Kobe one tenth down 63-578. Through goes Tim Slay, then Stephen Brewster in yellow. Kyle Reed is ahead of Stephen Clark, so he's had a good result to that one. Alan Walk is next up. Here come the leaders down into the hairpin for the last time. And it's David Slay who is going to take his first win of the 2011 season. Two to Covey, one to Tim Slay, and now one to his brother David Slay from pole position. Takes the win, Vic Covey in second position. Third is Chris Smiley, there is Tim Slay in fourth position ahead of Stephen Brewster crossing the line now. Then Kyle Reid, Steve Clark and Alan Walk having a head-to-head -head as they go to the flag. And I think Steve Clark just got the better of that one. The ladies championship race being won by Fiona Wallace from Louise Flitton across the line goes 17 Fiona Wallace so good job for her 13th overall Louise Flitton second in the ladies 21 Elaine Marshall will take third place in the ladies championship there across the line goes Michael Falconer just getting the better of Guy Johnston in the end David Slay, very happy with that result, as you can see, being congratulated as well by the, his wingman there, Chris Smiley. Smiley gets third behind Vic Covey with Slay, the winner. Tim Slay, fourth from Stephen Brewster and Kyle Reid in six. Seventh place goes to Steve Clark from Alan Walk. Then it's Hamish Brandon and Kenny McLeod. Murray Muir, 11th, and Steve Kerr in 12th. Ladies' winner is Fiona Wallace from Louise Flitton and Elaine Marshall with Danny Dreeland in 16th from Michael Falconer and Guy Johnston in 18th. 19th place goes to Emma Bruce. That's more like it. That answered our question from earlier on, didn't it? Uh, it certainly did. Yeah, it's good to get the car uh, 
back on a good pace again there, so happy that we're kind of making improvement in that new car. Yeah, it went very, very well. You looked like you were really controlling that from the front, but you, it did look like you were just maybe slowing down a little bit towards the end. No, I was actually starting to run into problems. That, uh, coming together, I had with Vic on the first corner, I actually bent my steering there, and uh, you know, the car felt good for about the first five laps, and the hairpin had just started like, pushing on, so I think I may have done something to the toe there, and it's just causing the tyres to overheat now. So that would make the difference towards the end, wouldn't it, with the lap uh, times? Definitely, definitely. I mean, I don't know what the times are there, but certainly I was really starting to make a bit of a mess out there, and you know, my heart was starting to pound harder at that particular stage thinking the massive lead I had and how how far it was going down. Desperate for the checkered flag to come out. Absolutely, you know that five that that last lap board is like uh, just so good to see it for some occasions. Well congratulations, let's look forward to race two. Thanks very much. Thank you. Pick, congratulations on your second place there, but I'm sure I saw you through the gravel trap there at one stage. I had a big moment through the gravel trap at the first corner. I managed to keep up with Dave off the line and I was really going for it around the outside. I thought if I don't do this quick I might not be able to and a tiny bit of contact, nothing deliberate, it's just two cars going for one gap. And, I came off worse through the gravel, back on, sideways, and Tim managed to sneak through, and then I was defending from Chris. Managed to get back past Tim, going into Clark, so a bit of contact there. Was, I'm going to put my hand up, so that was my fault. It was maybe a bit over-enthusiastic going up his inside, but he left the door open, so uh, you'll just have to cope with that one. I'm sure he'll pay the favour. And uh, beyond that, it was just a chase to try to catch Dave down, but I just didn't have the pace in the car or in me, and Dave looked like he was kind of managing it at the front. He was just kind of pegging laps. I was catching him, but never enough to... Maybe another couple of laps, and I might have done it. Well, congratulations, that was, that was quite a drive, and obviously the car's not feeling too bad after its wee excursion. It's not feeling too bad, there's a few things we're going to need to work on it with, but uh, all credit to the guys at Minimax Motorsport, they've got a wonderful car prepared. I mucked up in qualifying this morning, and that just wasn't great, but uh, a lot of thanks to all the guys that helped me out, Pallet Force again this year, Caldon and Colour Printer, Shepherd and, and Core Cup, all sticking with me, which is uh, great and allows us to come and do this. Well, we'll look forward to race two. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye -bye. Now, I'm here with Kenny McLeod. Kenny, I see the Chaz logo all over the front of your car. Tell me, what's going on there? We're uh, supporting a really worthwhile cause um, for the Children's Hospice Association in Scotland. And uh, we're donating a prize to the Monaco Grand Prix for 2012 for two people. It's an all expenses paid VIP trip to the Jewel in the Crown of motor racing. And all you have to do is guess where I'm going to finish in any of the races this year. Uh, in the Scottish Mini Cooper Championship. And if you guess correctly, for one pound, you will be entered into a draw. And on the basis that when the draw gets done, if your name comes out of the hat, then you can be a Monte Carlo next year. Oh, fantastic. So somebody could actually enter for every single race then? It's not like one thing, it's not for the overall championship position, it's each race? You've got it right, Sasha. Yeah, we're going to run it for every single race of the, the championship this year. So you can enter online at uh, www.gpamini.com. You can enter, you could pick every position for £15, or a normal entry is just a pound, and you could do that either on the website, or you could do it by text on 70099. You text the word Chaz, and then where you think I'm going to finish, and that's you. If you, if you guess correctly, you're on your way to Monaco next year, you and your partner, your friend, whoever. Well, I think I might be entering that one myself. <laughs> well, it is. It's open to everyone. Uh, all my competitors, are, it's open to everyone. And, you know, credit to the mini guys. Almost all of them are running Chaz stickers on their cars voluntarily. And we're doing a Chaz Grand Prix later on in the year with some of the kids. We're going to do a race with the minis and take the kids around. And so we're doing quite a lot of work with them. It's such a, a wonderful cause. And, of course, very local that it's, it's just down here, down from Knock Hill. So we're really hoping to raise quite a lot of money for the for the, the, the charity. And you know, hopefully someone who's watching the show or someone who's here watching the racing can get a really amazing experience next year at the at the Monaco Grand Prix. Absolutely, that would be quite a thrill to get there. Absolutely, it's great. You know, I'm I'm very fortunate that I get to go with work and you know, we look after a lot of people there through through the Grand Prix Adventures company. Um, and it's just wonderful, you know, you can't describe being stood at the lowest hairpin as 24 cars come around at breakneck speed. It's, it's incredible, the noise and the drama and the excitement. Um, we maybe get a bit more drama and excitement out of the minis, but only certainly from where I'm sitting, maybe not from the from the TV coverage. And any tips for anyone wanting to text where you're going to finish this race? Where do you reckon? Well, I'm starting 10th, um, so maybe 10 would be, be a good position. <laughs> However, um, it largely depends, I think, on what the Panda Man does. And Murray the Fash, who's my nemesis in number 10, the pink car, uh, he and I have been swapping positions every race so far this season. So uh, depending on what Murray does and depending on what I do, but yeah, 10, maybe 9. Uh, and right up until lights go out. So I guess when this show goes out, you'd be looking at the next race. Uh, so please do go to gpmini.com, enter the competition. Every single penny we raise goes to the Children's Hospice. We keep absolutely nothing from it. And, uh, you know, look forward to being in Monaco next year. And if you're not, at least you've given to a really worthwhile cause. Well, thank you very much for your time and good luck. Thanks very much, thank Sasha. You. Thank you. 
Now, I've managed to track down Vic Covey, series coordinator for the Mini Championship here in Scotland, and uh, there seems to be an awful lot of cars out here on the grid. Yeah, we've got first time ever since we started the series in 2003, Sasha. Uh, we've got over 20 cars. In fact, we had 21 yesterday, and unfortunately we lost Stephanie McMurdo to a testing accident, which was a real shame. Yep. But we've got 20 today, and I'm absolutely thrilled. And an awful lot of them are newcomers as well. Yeah, we've got 14 newcomers to the championship this year. Now, some of these guys have raced before, but hadn't done this sufficient number of races. But it's still a terrific, uh, a terrific turnout. And, of course, five ladies. I can't think of any other championship in the world that has five lady competitors in it. Well, it's certainly on the up, that's for sure, and uh, very, very close racing as well. Well, I predicted, if you remember, when we spoke earlier in the year, that the sharp end was really going to probably be down to four guys, and, and, and that's just the way it's, it's panning out. There's just nothing between them. Absolutely, and it's also interesting to see, uh, we were just talking to Kenny McLeod there with the charity angle and the, the Chaz angle, a lot of the guys are, are carrying the stickers on the cars as well for that. Yeah, I think apart from uh, this being really competitive, it's a really nice group of people. Uh, the Chaz project is, is so worthwhile uh, that I would have been hugely disappointed at anybody turn around and go, what, what are you doing with that? And I think you see every car is carrying the stickers, all the guys are in behind it, because uh, they're a nice bunch of people. Well, they're not very nice to each other when they're out on track, I have to say. Uh, that, that is different. When the lights change and the helmets are on, it does change a bit. But certainly in the paddock, they, they get on great. Well, thank you for your time. We'll catch you soon. Pleasure. Thank you. Cars coming out onto the grid then for race two of the weekend. And pole position going to race one winner, David Slay, with Vic Covey Jr. alongside. Chris Smiley and Tim Slay make up the second row and they're followed by Steve Brewster and Kyle Reid. Steve Clark and Alan Walk on row four, then it's Hamish Brandon and Kenny McLeod, Murray Muir and Steve Kerr on row six. Seventh row of the grid reversed from what we saw in race one, Fiona Wallace and Louise Flitton, then Elaine Marshall and Daniel Dreeland, Michael Falconer and Guy Johnston on row nine, Emma Bruce and Adam Leach on the 10th row of the grid. Adam, of course, non-finishing in race one as we look at the drivers on row two of the grid. Chris Miley finished third in 22, and car number four, Tim Slay, who appropriately finished fourth there. Coming into line at the back of the field is Adam Leach in his blue and green livery car. We can expect Adam, or hope that Adam, can make some progress from the back of the field. Steve Kerr, incidentally, started at the back of the field after limited qualifying. He finished in ninth place, as you'll have seen from the grid. Five second ball being shown, first light, second light on, third on now and we're getting ready for our second eight lapper in the Scottish Mini Cooper Cup. Great start once again from David Slay, is he going to make it a double, Vic Covey this time slots down rather than going for the race, I think Vic was probably a little bit worried about uh, getting hung out to dry because look there's a train of cars behind him with Tim Slay up into third position, Tim Slay in third position, fourth position is Chris Smiley and we're looking back from Vic Covey Jr who made a good getaway in second a bit of dirt being kicked up there as the cars go through Scotsman Corner for the first time now through John Arweir a little bit of a Mr Whippy moment on there for the race leader David Slay who's coming under pressure from Covey looks to the outside Covey right on the offensive right from the word go certainly means business kicks up the dirt there so too does Chris Smiley and following Chris Smiley uh, in white I think was Kyle Reid kicking up a bit of dirt as well Steve Clark down behind him. The club, an amateur racer. Here at Go Racing TV, we salute you. And we want to give you all the tools and info to compete with the best. Find out how to do it all from your own garage by watching our Club Racer and Autocrosser shows. GoRacingTV.com, supplying all your video racing needs. And Vic Covey in the core cut car now looking around the outside this is brave stuff 
from Vic Covey Jr. because here comes Tim Slay up the inside. This is the danger if you go for the outside line. And Tim Slay's coming up the inside side by side with Vic Covey Jr. And are we going to see the brothers here on for a 1-2? Covey from challenging for the lead is now trying to get second position back. And I think Slay might have had his nose in front, but Covey is going for the sweep down into Duffer's dip. But Tim Slay's got the line in car number four, forces Covey onto the dirt slightly there. They're still side by side. And Tim Slay up the inside, the XR2 champion, proving his mettle here. We have one meeting in the Scottish Mini Cooper Cup last year where he took a race win. And he's up into second place, started fourth on the grid. Vic Covey a little bit ragged there. He's got Chris Smiley right behind him as well, looking to challenge for fifth position is Stephen Clark in the green car it's a bit of a job to know where to look isn't it who's challenging Kyle Reid the white car with the newcomers insignia on the back this is great news for David Slay because he's getting away down the road as indeed he did in the first race of the day but Vic Covey now putting pressure on Tim Slay again who runs wide Tim Slay runs wide Chris Smiley coming up the inside but can't quite do it Smiley doesn't have enough momentum Kyle Reid chops across in front of uh, Stephen Clark in green very decisive move from him but Covey up the inside line Chris Smiley seems to have lost a wee bit of momentum as they come up the hill field getting pretty well strung out we look at 17 Fiona Wallace goes through leading the ladies cup again so Fiona on for some more points for the ladies championship and up into second position now goes Vic Covey Jr. in car number seven. So Covey second has got to try and chase down David Slay. It's Tim Slay in third place. Then in fourth position, Kyle Reid. And Chris Smiley did lose a lot of momentum, lost a hat load of places, finds himself back down now behind Stephen Brewster. And Smiley, this is his fifth race of the year. It's everybody's fifth race of the year. But he just is not getting the rub of the green at the moment, is Chris Smiley. As we look at... Stephen Brewster and down the inside of Brewster we go in front of them it's Kyle Reid in 20 following through so Steve Clark goes through and uh, good position for him and Chris Miley trying to make up a bit of ground here through goes the race leader there's Vic Covey Jr Tim Slay next up then Kyle Reid followed by Stephen Clark here's the train at the moment led by Clark Chris Miley in the mix as well then it's the number 19 car of Stephen Brewster Alan Walk behind them, just keeping a watching brief at the moment. Here we go on board with Woo Woo. Let's have a look and see what he can do about this gaggle of cars in front of him. We were looking at the uh, yellow car of Stephen Brewster earlier on from Chris Smiley. Let's see whether Alan can make any progress. Coming up towards Clark Corner. Car Lube is its branded now. Turn in, take a little bit of the kerb. You can see that raised in inner kerb now, very, very clearly from our onboard shot from Alan Walk. And here we come then on to one of the fastest parts of the circuit 86 87 miles an hour up to 90 miles an hour here and then up to 95 top speed as they then drop right the way down into the hairpin just over 30 miles an hour at a very very tight corner and this scrap still on between these two cars Stephen Brewster and Stephen Clark the two Steves but it's the yellow Stephen that goes through Stephen Brewster makes up the position or does he they're still side by side now where's Alan Walk going to put his money here he can go either way at the moment and he's going to side with Stephen Clark in green by the look of it, but Brewster fighting back down the inside. Always a danger of getting forced onto the curves, but through goes Stephen Clark. Oh no, he doesn't because Brewster fights back again. Alan Walk trying to follow through as well, hasn't quite got enough momentum, and perhaps a little bit mindful of some damage that he's had over the uh, course of the last season or so. Poor old Alan Walk had a horrendous role in qualifying for the last round of the 2010 Championship. Down behind there, Murray Muir going a little bit wide in the uh, pink livery car, but the, the battle still raging between the two Stevens at the moment. Even Stevens, I guess you could probably say. And Alan Walk still trying to fight his way through as well, but Brewster in yellow has got that inside line. Alan Walk's coming up to have a look down the inside, and Brewster down the inside now. Walk's going to try and follow him through. Alan Walk following him through. He's going to make up a position there, or is he? Because Steve Clark in the green car is still hanging on on the outside line. It's incredible stuff from these two drivers. So evenly matched. They've been side by side for lap after lap after lap. They're really enjoying their racing. And I guess Alan Walk's enjoying being involved here and wondering who to side with. It's an absolute devil of a question. They're still at it side by side. They're losing ground on the trio in front. So Brewster in yellow just drops back that position now. And Stephen Clark's 
holding sway. This is the, the battle for sixth position on circuit. So ahead of them, you can see Chris Smiley now starting to get onto the back of Kyle Reid, who's running in fourth position. Now things might settle down a little bit, so Alan Walk starting to have a, a think as to whether he can get past Stephen Brewster. It looks like Vic Cove is challenging for the lead, just gone out of shot. As I say, a real devil to know where to look. Here comes the scrap for fourth place, Kyle Reid in car number 20, still hangs on to fourth position from Chris Smiley, who will be very frustrated, Smiley, because he's one of the four drivers that Vic Covey Senior mentioned should really be in with a shout at the overall championship. And Kyle Reid, racing hard, as he's entitled to do, is underlining his potential, I would say, as maybe a race three winner before too long. And I would almost say certainly before the end of the season. Looks to me like a complete natural, but here comes Smiley, trying to find a gap, but maybe isn't there. Kyle Reid gets tapped by Chris Smiley. Smiley may be getting a little bit frustrated with... Uh, Having, having been uh, dropped back that far. Look how far the leaders are ahead now as we get Vic Covey Jr. challenging David Slay in car number three. So Slay still leading. Vic Covey Jr. in second position, running well. Then it's Tim Slay in third place. So Covey, the meat in the Slay Brothers sandwich at the moment. Covey always takes an aggressive line here and just gives notice to David Slay that he wants to have a look down the inside. But if he goes too wide, Tim Slay's going to have a look up the inside doesn't work for him and the three drivers stay pretty much as they were coming on to the last lap here and it looks like it's going to be a double for David Slay off into the gravel goes Kenny McLeod so if you've uh, had a little flutter on where Kenny's going to finish I suspect it, it ain't going to be 10th position as the all the cars go through Fiona Wallace having an excellent uh, battle there but back up to the front we go and it's David Slay still there look at Tim Slay now challenging Vic Covey Jr for second position as they go through John Arweir out of that corner they go down towards Carlu now is Tim Slay going to be able to take second position well he's dropped back and Vic Covey Jr back on the offensive now very wide indeed at Carlu onto his lops for the last time through the dust now oh, we'll get the better camera angle now with the dust gone and it's David Slay still in lead position Tim Slay having a look down the inside, so too does Covey, David Slay leads through that guy, he gets tagged by his brother Tim, Tim Slay tags his brother, oh it all went off there as they were coming down into the hairpin and Vic Covey's looking up the inside of Tim Slay, side by side, up across the line they go and Vic Covey's taken the win, Vic Covey wins the race from Tim Slay, David Slay recovers for third, Kyle Reid and Chris Smiley next from Alan Walk, then it's Steve Brewster who got the better of Stephen Clark, here's a replay as they come through Carlu, Tim Slay on the offensive. You can see Vic Covey Jr. loses a bit of momentum there by clipping the gravel as they went through Carlu. Slay piles his way past and he's going to look. He gets into second position, dives down the inside. Bang! Into his brother. That is definitely not brotherly love. Recovers well, but recovering even better was Vic Covey Jr. in car number seven who takes another win. He's third win of the 2011 season. Covey's win from Tim Slade, David Slade in third and Kyle Reid fourth from Chris Smiley, Alan Walk in sixth place. Seventh goes to Stephen Brewster, ahead of Stephen Clark. Then it's Steve Kerr from Hamish Brandon, Murray Muir in 11th and Fiona Wallace taking the ladies win again in 12th. Daniel Dreeland next from Kenny McLeod, Michael Falconer 15th from Guy Johnston, Louise Flitton 17th, just ahead once again of Elaine Marshall. Then it was Emma Bruce and Adam Leach does get a finish in 20th. guys off the podium for the mini race there obviously we're missing David your brother Tim talk us through what happened there uh, well, ju just the last lap pretty much I suppose eh, where it all sort of happened uh, I mean Dave, Dave and Vic got into a bit of a battle Vic was driving really well uh, obviously got in the back of Dave Dave was doing a good job sort of slowing him up in the right places to get me into the mix I suppose uh, I came out of Clark so I got much better driving than, these, uh, than Vic and Dave coming down railway came over sort of like side by side down past Vic, just got over the sort of front of him, he tagged on the back of me and just started turning me uh, side on sort of thing. And it was just, it's just a racing incident, it's one of these sort of things I couldn't get, quite get in him quick enough and by the time I straightened the car up I was too late for braking, I had pedal jammed full to the floor 
and I could just see my brother deep in the hairpin. I was just like, oh no, this isn't going to end good. And we collided, I took my brother out. And it, was, uh, and it just left you nowhere to go really, didn't it? Well, that was it, exactly. Up straight into sort of door and it was, there we are, sort of I damaged two cars now and I uh, lost my brother a win, which I'm deeply uh, regretful for, but it's uh, unfortunately it, was, it wasn't anybody's fault, it was just that. Well, it's one of those things, as you say, it is a racing incident and you were working really, really well as a team there um, with David backing everything up until get you back into the mix. So, um, well done in your second place anyway. Thank you very much, thanks a lot. Thank you. And race winner, Vic, that worked out quite well for you. Yeah, it's, uh, the race looked like it was going to take a different turn towards the end when uh, Dave started stopping on every apex he could see. Uh, pulled me right back into Tim and Tim did get a much better run than me and he started moving across and I was like Tim you're not quite far enough I'm going to keep my boot in here and I'm going to try and keep up the inside of you and I, to be honest I thought, him to, I thought he was going to cut back out and, and do me on the run up to the hairpin which I kind of had no defence over and then we just touched and no more as he was coming across and once that he's a passenger I took to the gravel to try and stop there and nearly collected the two of them when they were sitting there and then an easy run up to the flag with the, the crab that was Tim Slade's car trying to make its way up there but uh, uh, it was a, it's a good race. It's not the way you want a race to end. I'd have been really happy with second or been able to get past Dave and Moan, but uh, no, it was a good race and I'll, I'll take the points again. Absolutely, and for your confidence point of view, you got the fastest lap there again. Yeah, I mean, oh, the car was working really well. I mean, we I mean, have a wee fault going in the, the front left tyre because that last lap turned into Clark's. So it was like, whoa, what's happened here? It didn't even turn in. So we'll have a wee walk with that. So we'll, uh, we'll go away and we'll work on that. We should be back out with a, a good run in the next one. Good luck. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi there, I'm Tom Natcher, and this is Greg Kramer. We're called the old bastards of racing in many circles. You know, I guess we met back in the late 1980s. Easy, easy. It had to be at least that far back. Glory day of some racing, too. Oh, absolutely. Trans Am was a part of the picture. And actually, I learned to do pro announcing from this man around the Trans Am Championship. Oh, that is a long time ago. A very long time ago, but I'll tell you what, you take a look at Trans Am Racing in the early 90s in particular, the names that were running at that time. But the other side of the story was World Challenge was really starting to come alive at that point. And the names in that, there were sometimes you'd look at the two rosters and go, you know, I'm not sure which one is the most talent. Some amazing stuff from those decades past. And of course, a lot of those drivers also doubling up, running amateur racing in the runoffs. And it was spectacular stuff. Now, Go Racing TV has got all of that action, Trans Am World Challenge, and even some runoff material all coming up over the next season. That's going to be something to watch. I know. To be able to relive those two decades of motorsports from the Sports Car Club of America's Pro Racing Department, Trans Am World Challenge, and then you include the National Amateur Championships, the runoff, the intense battles that unfolded there, it simply doesn't get any better than that, and it lives again right here on GoRacingTV.com. Because I need to spend more time in front of my computer. Stephen, I wanted to grab a quick word with you. This is only your second ever race meeting and you're doing pretty well for yourself. Not too bad, yeah. Um, just out here to have a bit of fun, to be honest. And uh, pace has been all right. So just sort of uh, to try and mix up with the top boys. Uh, I'm just behind the reverse grid. Uh, I think I'm alongside Vic, so we'll see what we can do. But I'm just out here to have a good time, to be honest. Well, it'd be quite a good way of picking up some tips, perhaps. Yeah, exactly. Well, I was following, uh, I was following Steve Brewster in that race and he's been sort of teaching me the ways so uh, it's quite a fast learning curve but it's, uh, it's good, I'm enjoying it a lot. Good and obviously you've, you've come into this when the minis is at its busiest, so there's yeah. 20 cars on the grid today so you're doing pretty well to show yourself as high up as you are. Yeah it's good, uh, I think you just got to go in sort of confident and uh, confident in your abilities and, uh, and not be put off by the fast guys that have been here for seven seasons so uh, you just got to kind of keep your head in it and uh, just enjoy it and that's what it's all about really. Well, I'll let you get into your car. Good Thank luck. You. Thank Cheers. you. There's the front row of the grid and an absentee where we should see Stephen Brewster because we're looking at the second position man and that is Alan Walk. So Stephen Brewster non-starting by the looks of things. 
Alan Walk therefore gets the outside pole. Chris Smiley and Carl Reid on row two. David Slay and brother Tim Slay on row three. The fourth row, Vic Covey Jr., race winner from race two. So it's the top seven that get reversed. Then Steve Clark, Steve Kerr and Hamish Brandon, Murray Muir, and top lady so far this weekend, Fiona Wallace. Then Danny Dreeland and Kenny McLeod, Michael Falconer and Guy Johnston on row eight. Row nine, Louise Splitton and Elaine Marshall. At the back of the grid, Emma Bruce and Adam Leach. That's the way they line up then for our third race of the day. Once again, over eight laps. And Alan Walk with a clear run down into Duffer's Dip for the first time. He's going to get pressure, though, from... Kyle Reid and Chris Smiley for sure. The Slay brothers won't be hanging around either on row three. So let's hope that we don't get the uh, occasional uh, mini bun fight on the uh, reverse grid. I'm sure the guys are all going to be going for it. Red lights on, blue skies. Looking at Guy Johnston's car, Danny Dreeland just on the outside of shot that we saw there. Great start by Alan Walk, I think he's leading this one. Walk it is that gets away from the front row of the grid. Chris Smiley in the red and white 22 car is looking up the inside. So it goes Hamish Brandon, car number 12 is Steve Kerr. Down behind him it's Murray Miller in the black car with the pink trim, but up into second place goes Chris Smiley. Chris Smiley, well, started second on the grid by virtue of the non-starting Steve Brewster. So Smiley into second place. Third place is Kyle Reid. Fourth position is the red car of David Slay. And through go the leaders there, Chris Smiley chasing Alan Walker at the moment. Bit of dirt being kicked up into Chris Smiley's windscreen as they come along his lobs for the first time and now head down towards Real Radio and is there half a gap there Alan Walk's keeping it pretty tight Chris Smiley I don't think he's going to have room to go through but he's going for it he thinks it's a karting size gap the two cars touch here we go on board with Alan Walk now let's look and see if there's any reaction from Alan no there isn't very cool very calm very collected Alan Walk he wants to hang on to second position and you've got to say Chris Smiley there was that a mini-sized gap or was it not? I'm sure the uh, officials will have their own view on that one. But Chris Smiley, some forceful touring car style driving to take him up into lead position. Alan Walk now in second. And never mind, form an orderly queue behind. Form three wide behind because down on the inside, up into third position has got car number four, the white car with the pink stripes. That's Tim Slay. Then we've got a battle on side-by-side. -side. Kyle Reid with race two winner and former champion Vic Covey Jr. in car number seven right behind him. Covey runs a little bit wide there. He's got David Slay behind him. And then behind David Slay, it's Stephen Clark in green number nine. Then Hamish Brandon in the Panda car. But we're on board with Vic Covey. Looking back at David Slay coming out of car loop through his lops down the straight towards the hairpin. We'll see the tri-oval section in a minute. Left of shot. There it is. And this is a, a quite a defensive line into the hairpin by Vic Covey Jr. Still holding off. The number three car, David Slay, the 2008 XR2 champion, newcomer in the Scottish, sorry, newcomer champion in the Scottish minis in 2009. And there he is in the red car. Three wide here as they come down the straight, goes back to two wide as it's Slay side by side with number seven, Vic Covey. How is this one going to wind out? Covey virtually chucks the car across the curbs there to annex that position in car number seven. We're on board with the 26-year-old from East Lothian, Vic Covey Jr., second in last year's championship, 2008 champion Vic Covey. And really, you've got to say, people like him and David Slay, real top talent in Scottish motor racing. And... This one always gives us some superb entertainment, this championship. And uh, no exception today in the third of our three races. Through goes Murray Muir towards the back of the uh, lead group, kicking up a little bit of dirt. This is a view from the second place man, Tim Slay, 39-year-old from Edinburgh. Last year's XR2 champion, third in the Newcomers' Championship in XR2s in 2009 and moves up to the Scottish Mini Cooper Cup this year. So we've got a bit of a ladder where the drivers can come through here in Scotland, starting off in the XRs, then moving up here and other drivers, of course, move on as we go three wide. And Vic Covey Jr. looks like he's got the better of Kyle Reid. Up the inside now is going to go David Slay. Slay looking up the inside, but Kyle Reid's got the speed as they come down into the into Duffer's Dip. So Slay is going to have to... Wait to try and pass Kyle Reid again. Reid taking the defensive tight line into Scotsman Corner. Covey, you see, going wide and getting a wheel on the dirt there. Covey getting a little bit ragged, and that's going to lose him momentum. And Kyle Reid, only in his second race meeting, is there fighting hard with the former champion. Let's see what Reid can do. Through goes Tim Slay in second position. 
Well, this one really has got the makings of a classic. Chris Smiley having some luck at last at the sharp end and uh, getting away with Tim Slay in tow, but we're still looking back from Vic Covey Jr. Still got that little lead over Kyle Reid. And we've got a challenge on there, just behind them in green. Steve Clark having a look down there. Kobe Jr. on the exit of the hairpin, gets it all wide. There's a little bit of contact involving Hamish Brandon on the outside, who gets just tagged a little bit on the inside line. But Steve Clark trying to move up a position, and he does so ahead of Vic Covey Jr., who got hung out to dry there with that very, very wide line. There is Kyle Reed in car number 20, who's having a superb race at the moment in fourth position. Alan Walk still running in third. Good to see him running well. Just in front of them, it's Steve Kerr in the number 12 car. The uh, white car with the checker trim. He's got the better of Hamish Brandon at the moment. So Steve Kerr in eighth position. Hamish Brandon ninth. Murray Muir and Adam Leach fighting it out for tenth position. Down behind them, it's Kenny McLeod. And there goes Chris Smiley in 22. Up across the line again. Still Tim Slay in second position. And it looks like Chris Smiley could well be on for his first race win of the year. Round one weekend of the year, of course, saw Vic Kobe take the opening two races. Tim Slay took the third race. We've had uh, one apiece today for David Slay and Vic Kobe. And are we going to see Chris Smiley take this one? It's Tim Slay who won the third race in round, in round one or meeting one of the year. He's trying to get on terms with the race leader Chris Smiley but uh, it was Smiley who took the fastest lap in uh, two of the races at the first round of the year but down the straight they go for the last time heading down towards the real radio hairpin and Tim Slade looks like he's a little bit too far back to do anything about this closes up as you would expect under braking what sort of line is he going to get some more momentum out of the corner there doesn't seem to be enough time for him to do anything there is the chequered flag and it's Chris Smiley another winner to add to the, the uh, list of race winners for this year Chris Smiley is delighted with that one he takes the win from Tim Slade in second position it's David Slade who has made it up into third Here's confirmation then of the result here of race three of round two of the championship and the race win going to Ulsterman, Chris Smiley, second going to Tim Slay, David Slay in third with Alan Walk in fourth position, Vic Covey Jr. fifth and Steve Clark in sixth. Seventh place goes to Kyle Reid with Steve Kerr eighth from Hamish Brandon, Murray Muir next from Adam Leach and Kenny McLeod. Thirteenth goes to Fiona Wallace, just fending off Louise Flitter. Then Michael Falconer, fifteenth from Daniel Dreeland. Elaine Marshall, seventeenth, and Guy Johnston, eighteenth. Nineteenth place goes to Emma Bruce. Fastest lap of the race in race three went to Vic Covey Jr. Vic Covey Jr. leads the championship then from David Slay with Tim Slay in third place. Chris Miley now up to fourth. Kyle Reed, a very impressive fifth, and Steve Clark in sixth. In the newcomers, it's Tim Slay leading that from Kyle Reid with Steve Clark in third. Murray Muir, Adam Leach and Kenny McLeod complete the top six in the newcomers. And in the ladies' cup, Elaine Marshall leads the standings from Fiona Wallace with Emma Bruce third and Louise Flitton joining the battle today in fourth ahead of Steph McMurdo and Gemma Dreeland in sixth. Race winner Chris Smiley at last. I know we've just been plagued with so much bad luck. The first the first meeting we obviously get, we didn't finish the first race, so that meant that messes up for the rest of the day. And today we, we got a good, we qualified okay. We was run the inside, but in the first race this morning, good enough finish, strong finish. That's what we wanted. Second race we lost second gear, so it, it just messed our whole it messed our whole race up. So it did, but thankfully in that one there we got a good run because we needed it. <laughs> Absolutely, and I was I was looking to try and grab a word with you in the holding area before you got out, but you looked totally focused on what was coming. I know, I put my helmet on so you wouldn't come near me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, but that's just, it's one of these things. Just... Well, congratulations. All right, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Well, that's the guys all done here for the racing here today at Knock Hill Racing Circuit. This is them all lining up in Park Fermi. We've got our top three here, some fantastic racing here, and please make sure you join us next time for more action at Knock Hill.